You want to teach children and black women and black men, but you can't keep your temple straight? Nigga, please. You talking about last summer, open season on white people. I can't believe you said that, bro. Open season on white people. What about the white people that put your videos out across the airways, you dumb son of a bitch? All right, cool. Hold on. Why you sound so low? Hold on. Let me turn you up a little bit. All right, let me turn up my the same amount because I don't want nobody to say they sound louder than the other. But let me turn my mic up a little bit. All right. All right, brother. So now you believe in a flat earth. So he has, Mike has some questions for you first. Are you okay. prepared? Are you ready, my brother? Yeah, I'm prepared. All right, cool. Cause we're not going to do the whole back and forth and disrespect and all that stuff. We're coming in here that's and we're going to deal with this like brothers. Cause that's first and foremost. We brothers, we might disagree, but we brother. Look at me and Mike. Me and Mike don't disagree. Me and Mike disagreeing a lot, although we're agreeing a lot, but we right now, we brothers on, on, on the stage. All right. All right. Now, right, always, now, yes. what's the first question? Yes, sir. What's the first question you have for him, Mike? All right. The first question and, and greetings to you, brother Kufu. That out, brother. All right. The first question, um, I believe it was relating to the picture that I, uh, one of the pictures I put up. I don't know which model of flat earth you subscribe to. If you have a picture, you can submit that or you can reference it where we can go look at it. Um, but my question is the dimensions. The first question is, what are the dimensions of your flat earth? Like the depth from your feet to the bottom. Second question, um, uh, it's a B, A and a B to that. To each one of these questions, is A, B, and a C. So if you could write in or keep it in your mind, the dimensions, how deep from the floor, from your foot to the bottom, and then as relates to also the breadth, the length, width, depth, okay? Those three, and then the sky. How does the sky relate to your flat earth? I don't know if you saw the whole presentation, but we put up the Papyrus of Tamanu. And I said that the Papyrus of Tamanu depicts shoot, uh, Nut in a 360 degree covering manner of the earth. So where does your sky stop and does it ever like pinch down to touch the edge of your flat earth? How does the sky relate to your earth and how does the sky stay in course with the earth? Do you understand those those questions, brother? I understand those questions, sir. But asking me how deep the flat earth is, it's a, it's almost a ridiculous question. I don't I don't see how a person would know that. With flat okay, earth I could, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you but, why, brother. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Mike. I'm sorry, I don't want to let him respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, you're right. Let me, let me not. Right, so let's forget that that part of the question right now. You're talking about the depth of the Earth if it's flat. Yes. Actually, if it's flat. He, all right, we are gonna get back to that. See, let me try to answer that question though. Yeah. The furthest that I know that they have dug down is eight miles. So that's the furthest. That's the deepest I know that they have went. Is that a dig that site or is that a natural is that a natural chasm or a dig site like oil well dig dri dig like digging? Or? We as we as human beings, Earth is eight miles. Okay, if it's deeper so, than the Marianas Trench, can you refer us to it? What that dig site is? I could right now. I wasn't prepared for that, sir. All right, cool. Mm. Respect that. Let's move on. Um, what's the other question, Mike? Okay. Um, the next question is related to, huh? I'm uh, sorry, was saying was something? Next... Yeah, he said, what was the next question? I said, it was, where does the sky touch the ground? Yeah. Which is another question. I know. Physics. Where does the sky touch the ground? Is that, that's the question. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to think about it. I'm going to restate the question quickly so you can get a mental picture. Mental picture. Okay. If you take your hand, 
make it flat, brother. Yes, sir. And then the other hand, make it flat over the top of it. Like parallel, flat. Like one hand down, one hand down flat. No, no, down flat. Yeah, yeah, you go right there. The bottom is your flat earth. The top is the sky. Okay. I'm asking you. Yeah, I'm asking you at the ends of your earth, wherever the, the distance is, how does that relate to the sky? How does this flat earth contain the elements, which is the sky? Does it, uh, I mean, just school us on what does the sky have to do with the ground? I mean, because our understanding is that the sky surrounds the earth. Yes. But if you have a flat model, your sky sits on top of the earth without yes. a link. Okay. So when I say, does it ever touch the ground? I'm saying it would have to. And it sounds crazy, but this is physics that I'm dealing with. Yes. The reason I'm asking these questions, the reason I'm asking them, because we have to deal with physics and data. Now, if it doesn't touch at the what end. You have one second. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna let you get at it because I want you to understand. If it doesn't touch at the end, in some manner, that's crazy. I mean, you'd have to give us another theory on how it does that. How does the sky stay? We see different clouds every day, but what you know that blue thing up there, that blue essence, the sky, the clouds, the condensation, the ozone, the upper atmosphere. How does all that stay floating, brother? Please school us on that. Well, I don't know. And how does it change? I'll school us on the whole thing. I don't know what you talk about with the sky. If you talk about the firmament touching the ground, then we can talk. Okay. Firmament, that word would be harakia in Hebrew, the firmament. And that is a singular. That's why I'm asking you, listen closely. The sky, the sky floats above us. When I said to you earlier, Sanchez wants us all to not believe our lying eyes. When I look up yeah. at the sky, it's always above me. At the furthest point of land, the sky is always above me. That means that you have to tell me about your flat earth. How does the atmosphere not float off into interstellar space, brother? Now, are you looking at my screen? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's why I'm asking you, why does this, how does the sky work? Does it touch the ground at the edges? Does it touch the ice border? Is it a glass dome? What is it, brother? A little bit more specific when you say sky. Are you talking about oxygen? Are you talking about air? Because that's what okay. the sky is. You know that, right? Okay, I'm going to give you all of what I just said again. Okay, listen, listen closely because you have questions and I want you to understand the actual question. The sky has, brother, the sky has a lower atmosphere, which you and I are breathing. The sky has an atmosphere where the jet stream flows. And then there is a upper atmosphere. But all of that, as relates to the Bible, is called the firmament. And the Bible says that God separated the firmament now and even divided waters from waters. Now, those pictures and put them, please put them back up, brother, because we got to deal with this. If you're going to the Bible, if that's what you're asserting with the rakia, rakia does not mean flat. Look it up. Well, I'll give you the strong number because I want you to really go in on this now. Come on. Don't just show us pictures. Give us data. And if you're going to go into the Hebrew, I want you to tell us what harakia means. Seven five four nine in your strongs. H a r a q i a. That is not two or three or four. You know different things. It's all understood as the firmament. Hey Mike, can huh. I ask you real quick? Did the brother? Yes, brother. Did he bring up the Bible? Uh, he used that rakia. He put that up firmament. Okay. And rakia. And because I'm so experienced with these right, brothers right, that are right. falling right. away in the Israelite, so I'm asking the you. Israelite brothers that believe that, yeah, they I, use that picture and right. that word. All right, cool, fool. Yeah, Go ahead, my brother. Respond, brother. You have the floor. 
let me just say this. We didn't spend, I'll say about 15, 10 minutes, and we have not dealt with the spinning earth or if the <laughs> earth is flat. So with that being said, I, I'll entertain you because you're not about to ask me no real question I can see. And no disrespect, brother. To brother. Brother, one second. You can't disrespect me. I asked you questions. Are you going to answer the questions? Because we got three more, and you haven't answered the other two, but okay. you're showing pictures, you're showing harakia, and you're giving the wrong uh, tense and term and assigning it wrong already. Are you going to answer my questions, or are you going to just come and do the pseudo thing? Your questions was... You have pictures up there that say the firmament. Yes, that sir. word comes from the Torah. Genesis 1. Right? Yes. Are you calling that the sky? I'm telling you, brother, I just told you what I call the sky. Do you remember what I said the sky is? You said it was a lower atmosphere. That you lower breathe. Right. It's where the jet stream is. Where the jet stream is. And? And? How? What else did I say? There's an upper atmosphere where your so-called ozone layer is and even the things that have to do with the aurora, aurora borealis. Okay? I don't know if you know about any of this stuff, but brother, come on. We need data. That picture with the bubble over the dome. I asked you specifically about that before you showed the picture. I said, does your sky meet the ground at any point and you show us a picture of the sky meeting the ground and then you say that's crazy see Sir. you see that's how you get in trouble brother let's deal with the questions because you you're just stabbing yourself to death you showed this picture mike, we are never gonna get and you don't want to answer my question you have to be real Please clear mike uh, are you talking about the firmament because when you say the sky, I'm uh, I'm talking about what you're pointing to right here, calling it the firmament, whatever you want to call that. I just told you what I call the atmosphere. I showed the people earlier a, a model even without the atmosphere. You're calling it the firmament. You're picturing it as a globe or a bubble. And I'm asking you, what is that? And how does that work as relates to physics for our children and our people that you're telling to go drop out of high school? People like you, brother, and I respect you, but I got to turn it up here because you're stalling. You're stalling. You're stalling Let's spit it out, bro. Let's spit it out, brother. Come right. on, man. All right. Give him, two, Give him two minutes. Go ahead, brother. How, how deep is flat earth? I kept it real, Mike. I said I don't know. Okay, brother. Well, don't. Okay. When you say you don't know and then you assert that I'm saying something crazy, but then you show the picture. No. You see what I'm saying? Brother, that doesn't uh, that doesn't stand in scholarship. Well, what would we deal with? You can't do that. You can't do that. Now, can you explain this monstrosity you're showing us? Because I talked about it, brother. Yeah. And I'm asking you a direct question, please. Mike, the most high. The firmament. OK, so tell me what did the most high confirm to you about that as relates to the question I asked? Does the firmament touch the ground or does it touch even your ice border, the wall, the edge? I'm looking at it and you're telling us yes or no, brother. Come on. Yes or no. We see the screen. The screen says yes. The screen says you are telling us right now. The screen, brother, is telling us that you're saying right now that this sky touches the ground as if it's a window. As if it's a globe. I like it's an ice globe or a snow globe, brother. You, you see what I'm saying? Explain, Mike. Say again, brother. I wish you would let me explain, Mike. Oh, please do. That's what I'm asking. I, say, I keep saying please. Oh. Please do. Now, in 1988, Mike, there was a brother named Admiral Byrd. He traveled around the ice wall. South Pole. Yes, I'm very aware of Admiral Byrd. Yes. But after that, the Antarctic Treaty came into play. Mm -hmm. Now, why would they need an Antarctic Treaty, Mike, that keeps people from going down there? And you want me to answer a question that people can't even go down and uh, do independent research in the Antarctic. Now, you know that, Brother, right? I can prove you asking me a question. I can prove to you that not only Admiral Byrd went there on an expedition once, 
Well, Admiral Byrd went there until he died. And there are other governments today doing expeditions to the South Pole with icebreakers a million, brother. It's not undiscovered. And it's not the conspiracy lie that you're asserting again. Now, you just went back to Admiral Byrd. You went to Admiral Byrd. And Admiral Byrd's words himself said that on the other side of the South Pole, I'm giving you Admiral Byrd's words, brother. This is a scholar world we're dealing with. Admiral Byrd said on the opposite side of the South Pole, there is an area as large as the United States that is undiscovered. Now, what? on the opposite what? side, <laughs> Google it. Google it. Why? Everybody that's in the chat, Google the phrase that I just said and watch a video on Admiral Byrd. Admiral Byrd did over, brother, brother, Admiral Byrd what? did over 20 some odd expeditions to the South Pole. And I don't know what you think people haven't found out. But brother, there is plenty of information about what Admiral Byrd saw and what the actual Chinese government have done and what the Indian government has done and all of the United Nations have done in collusion. Brother, I don't know what you're coming here with that is because you won't answer a question. Now you're asking me questions about Admiral Byrd, a white man that really, if you want to believe in conspiracy theory, you shouldn't believe a word he said. Why? Because he's your so-called enemy as relates to that Bible. I'm your brother. You're arguing with me, but you believe Admiral Byrd. Admiral Byrd said he went there, though, brother. He went there. That's what the white man said. He went there. Hmm? I'm your brother, too. So one of us Absolutely, you're my brother. We're coming up with two different conclusions. So it's not, it's not a beef. It's just that we're thinking different. Now, one no, of us is brother, wrong, it's not like, a beef. It's not a beef. Yes, I can assure you of that. One of us is defending Masons right now, and it's you, Mike. <laughs> now, if you're going to do that, brother, we're going to have to stop the conversation because I can't let you do that. That's an insult to me because I have brothers that are Masons, and I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay, so I think I think that's an insult. I don't want to do that. Let's get back to scholarship. Masons have nothing to do with a flat earth. Masons didn't give you that picture that you brought here, dragged up in here, and you can't even explain. No Mason in the world would be that disrespectful to children, this dear sister that's in here, and the people that are listening. No Mason around the globe would do what you just did. I called you before you brought this mess, and you won't answer a question. Now you're calling me a Mason. I'm going to give you one more shot, brother, then I'm going to ask Garfield to chunk you out, all right? Let's ask, answer the picture that you put up here. I just gave you the word for it in Hebrew. That monstrosity that you're calling there is only half of what the word Ha-Rakia is. I showed the people what Ha-Rakia is. In Hebrew here, I'm telling you, and in the Kemet culture through Papyrus of Tamanu, a 360-degree panoramic covering of the globe. Or the oblate spheroid, brother. Now, you said firmament. I said the Hebrew says harakia, not haraka, not this snow globe that you're showing us. Now, I asked you, did the the sky touch the ground? I said yes. Yes or no? I said yes. Would you call this? All sky? right. I said, I have you ever grabbed a handful of sky? Because you're talking about sky as if it's movable, like it's bendable. Like it's flat? bendable, like it's metal, brother. You acting like the sky is metal or glass, like you can actually shape it without using physics, without using motion. The spin, the moon that tugs on the atmosphere, that actually gives it its bulge at the equator. Brother, you come in here in front of the world, in front of a scholarly platform with no data. And I gave you the model before you said it. I gave you the model before you presented this monstrosity. And you have not given us one piece of data. Talking about Masons. I'm going to say to you, Khufu, have a good day, brother. And I want to encourage you to go back and listen to what I said. And go deep into the, uh-uh, brother, listen to me. Please listen to me. 
I want you to go back after this show and pull up everything that I said. And I want you to read every word that you can find concerning the Coriolis effect. Every word as relates to momentum. Every word as relates to what the earth is, what shape it is, and why it's that shape. Go look up every word. Uh, uh, uh. Listen. Go look up every word, brother, please. Go look up every word, every word of what creates high tide and low tide. Because all of the ancient Semitic and African cultures fed themselves when the high tide came in through fishing. The high tide don't work on a flat earth. You haven't given us nothing. And I have to cut you off because you're just playing games. And I don't do this conspiracy stuff. It makes me angry and it's disrespectful to me because I give this thought and I prepared a lesson for you. Now, brother, again, peace and blessing to you, brother Khufu. And that's the end of our uh, going back and forth, brother. All right.